To understand current events regarding Israel-Palestine, it is essential to be aware of the history and context of this issue. Originally, the vast majority of the population in what is now called Israel had been Muslim and Christian. But in the late 1800s, zealots from Europe and the U.S. began a movement called Zionism, whose goal was to push out this population in order to take over the land for a Jewish state. This piece right here is incredibly important, and I've said this time and time again. At one point, you did have it so where Jewish people and, you know, Palestinians, like they lived side by side. It was Zionism that came in and started to say, we are going to push the Palestinian people out and we're going to have a Jewish state only. So again, when we have these talking points, it is very important that when we're pushing back on people with some of the Zionist propaganda that is said to us, we always got to go back to the history and let them know that we are well aware that at one point, Jewish people and Palestinians actually lived side by side. It was Zionism that came in to change the game. For decades, this was a fringe movement, as most Jews around the world, including in the region itself, did not support it. Experts in the U.S. State Department and Pentagon opposed it, saying it would cause bloodshed and harm to the U.S. Eventually, however, this movement succeeded. In 1948, Zionist forces expelled hundreds of thousands of Palestinian Christians and Muslims and confiscated their land and property to create a Jewish state. Now, notice that they said that most of the Jewish people who were there were actually against it. They did not want Zionism. So you need to ask yourself, if the majority of the Jewish people who were there did not want it, how was it allowed to happen anyway, right? So again, that reminds me of direct democracy. What I, what I talk about in the United States, how the only way we have direct democracy is through the states, the ballot initiative states. On the national level, we do not, right? So you have to ask yourself again, how was that allowed to slide through if the majority didn't want it? Which they decided to name Israel. Israel was now established in 78% of what had been mandatory Palestine. Then, in 1967, Israel launched another war and conquered what was left of Palestine, the West Bank and Gaza. This is illegal under international law. Pause. So here we go with this, this statement again. What happened here? The settlements, right? So the first picture, the white, the white part of the map here, those are Jewish settlements. The green part is the Palestinian land. And you can see what happened over the years. That was 1947. Here's the UN plan, 1947, the UN plan. So they're a part of this too. Everybody remember that when you ask these questions, like why is it the UN is not doing more than they could? Remember, they were a part of this too. Their plan was for the Israeli land, again, to take over about this much part of Palestine. In the second picture, you'll see the white part. That was supposed to be the Israeli land. And the green portions here were supposed to remain the Palestinian land. In 1949 to 1967, you can see, once again, this is where more of the settlements start to pop up. So this is actually going against the plan that the UN had. So Israel did what they wanted to do anyway. They have been doing this since then. Nobody stopped them then. That's why they're continuing to do it today. And then we fast forward to present and you see these little green spicks here, the West Bank and Gaza, and you can see what is actually left of the Palestinian land. Let's go on. By the way, during that war, Israeli forces tried to sink a U.S. Navy ship monitoring the conflict killing 34 American servicemen and injuring 174. Israel has now turned the West Bank and Gaza into open-air prisons, controlling all entrances and exits and invading at will. Every day, Israeli soldiers invade Palestinian villages, beat and abduct Palestinians, including children, and destroy Palestinian property. Every single day. So when people tell you this all started October 7th, no, this started 1947. We got to go all the way back. And before October 7th, they were still beating Palestinian children. You saw the pictures, you've seen the videos multiple times before. They have been harassing these people. They've been assaulting these people for decades. 
So what you have to understand is that these people, because they've been occupied, because they've been oppressed, this is how a group like Hamas begins to form. Because when you're occupying the people under international law, they have a right to resist. They have a right to armed resistance. So it's always important when we get these Zionist talking points thrown our way from people like Rabbi Shmuley and Michael Rappaport and, and his crazy ass. When you get those talking points from those people, the way that you defeat them is by knowing the history. And once you start telling the history, this is when they'll try to overtalk you because you're starting to tell the truth. You have to dial it back. You have to pull it back from October 7th and start with how this all began in the first place. Israel has blockaded Gaza for 14 years, causing malnutrition in children, huge unemployment and desperation. 70% of Gazans, at least, are refugee families pushed out by Israel in 1948, their ancestral homes and land stolen by the new Jewish state. Finally, in 2018, Gazans began a mass, Gandhian-type march for their rights. Israel responded by deploying snipers, and it began shooting demonstrators during their weekly protests for over a year. Pause. Okay. 2018, they decided to protest peacefully. And how did the IDF respond? They began shooting them. So when people tell you that they didn't have a right to resist, I just want you to remember they tried to do things the peaceful way. They tried to peacefully protest. Imagine if we were peacefully protesting in the streets and all of a sudden the president sent in the national guard and they just started shooting everybody. Put yourself in their shoes. Now, some of you say that this is not our issue because it's not happening in this country. You have to remember that the U S the police that we have in the United States are trained by the IDF. They use some of the same tactics where do you think the chokehold came from? When you look at the way that George Floyd, that Derek Chauvin, the way that he went after George Floyd, when he put his knee on his neck, where do you think that came from? So it's only a matter of time, people, and I've been trying to signal the alarm for this. What they did to the Palestinian people in 2018, where they were peacefully protesting, who's to say there won't come a time in this country where the president won't tell the police to do that to us? Well, I mean, this is a typical pathology of the United States, to be honest. If you have something that they want, if you have something that they need, then they hate you. They demean you and they dehumanize you. You're not just an enemy to them. You're not even human. They need you to not be human uh, so that they can morally justify to themselves all of the cruelty and the brutality that they will employ against you uh, to exploit you, to use you and to uh, pillage whatever you have that they want. Because they want to be able to enslave and abuse you in good conscience. The most obvious example, of course, is slavery. But, of course, that was just one, maybe the most acute and the most grotesque form of dehumanization that they did. But this is, this is just their way. You know, from the enslaved Africans, they wanted their labor uh, and they wanted the wealth that was produced by their labor. Now, other nations had slaves. The Muslims had slaves, too, but no one else in history, no one else in the world assigned slaves subhuman status. As I've talked about before, uh, slaves in the Muslim world could rise to an even higher socioeconomic status than their masters. In the Muslim world, the slave and the owner were brothers. But in America, the slave was considered a beast of burden and the owner of the slave was a sadistic beast master. Now, they needed it to be this way. They needed it to be this way because fundamentally, uh, they do not know how uh, or do not believe in peaceful, equitable transactions. They don't believe in mutual benefit. Mutual benefit to them represents some kind of loss for them. They don't believe in harmonious relations, fair transactions, fair exchange, and all of that. They believe in conquest. America was built on stolen land and sustained by stolen labor. And it has a long-standing habit, a tradition, of dehumanizing those who possess what it desires. So for the African slaves, they were dehumanized for their labor. 
for the sweat and tears that built the foundation of a nation claiming freedom for all. But they had to dehumanize them in order to make that claim, you see. Because they wanted to be able uh, to pretend that they were good, righteous, enlightened people who believed that all men are created equal. But they also wanted to continue treating African slaves as less than human, as less than equal. So they had to invent this idea that, well, they're not fully human. So therefore, it doesn't count. It wasn't a violation of their principles to treat beasts of burden as unequal. By dehumanizing them, they were able to convince themselves that chattel slavery didn't contradict with their claims of virtue. Or you can look at the Native Americans. The indigenous inhabitants of that land for centuries were dehumanized for the richness beneath their feet, for the land. They were pushed to the margins. Their cultures were erased. The lands that they held sacred were violated. All for America's insatiable, ruthless hunger for more, for expansion, for dominance. They don't understand the idea of coexistence, of peace and harmony. They believe in the philosophy of the last man standing. That's their approach to the world. First within uh, what's now the territorial United States, and then the entire Western Hemisphere, and then to the whole planet. This is what they applied. Mexico, Central America, South America, you see the Latin Americans, their natural resources were sought, and so their sovereignty was trampled upon. America's pursuit of what it desires has always been characterized by exploitation, domination, and subjugation. For all their talk about capitalism and the market, you know, free exchange and so on, for all their talk about this, it's not what they practice, and it's not what they fundamentally believe. For them, uh, capitalism means we make the money, we make the profit, we benefit. Everything is ours and nothing is yours. Well, that's not capitalism. It's barbarism. It's piracy. You can't go into a business deal or a negotiation with that mentality. That's the mentality that you have when you commit a bank robbery, not a business agreement. But you see, they can't admit to themselves uh, that they're actually just glorified pirates, glorified mafiosos, marauders, because they have a need to believe about themselves that they're good, enlightened, civilized people. So the only way that they can uh, reconcile their barbaric instincts uh, with their need to believe in their own goodness is by dehumanizing everyone else, dehumanizing everyone who has what they want, and they want everything. The United States is the only country in the world uh, who literally and seriously believes that control over the entire planet is vital to their national interests. Imagine. And we've gotten used to American dominance. We think the world actually has to operate like this. We imagine uh, that there's no other way for international relations to be carried out except by means of hege uh, hegemonic power. But of course, that's not correct. Just because one country uh, or even a few countries have more power than others, that does not necessarily mean or automatically mean that everyone else just has to kowtow to them and be exploited and be pushed around. And do as they're told. It doesn't have to be like that. That's a Western model. And it originates uh, from the Western psyche, which developed uh, through their own peculiar history and their own peculiar culture. Not everyone's like that. In fact, most people aren't like that. Are you like that? Of course not. It's abnormal. The truth is that even most average Westerners, most average Americans are not like that. And I think it's even... Uh, less and less prevalent now among the common people in the United States, precisely because their own government, uh, their own elites, are now dehumanizing even them, subjugating even them, treating uh, their own citizens as a subcategory of the human race who deserve to be exploited and disposed of after use. That's how the West and how America is treating its own people now, not just the global South. And yes, it's abnormal, it's pathological, it's sick. And most people, uh, even uh, most states around the world, are not like that. There's something wrong with you. I mean, China is not like that. China, by most metrics, uh, is the largest economy in the world. It's a global superpower, not a regional one. It's a global superpower. But it's not trying to dominate and subjugate the planet. The Chinese approach uh, to international relations is compatible uh, with the historic Muslim approach to international relations. This is why we get along. This, this approach is one of harmony, mutual benefit, uh, bilateral and multilateral cooperation. They don't feel 
that they're losing money if both of you make money. They don't regard uh, your prosperity or the prosperity of others as a threat to their own prosperity. They believe in mutually profitable transactions. You know, for the Chinese, if you have something uh, that they want, if you have something that they need, well, that makes you important to them. It makes you someone that they want to get along with. It doesn't make you an enemy. It doesn't make you, uh, or it doesn't make them want to invade and colonize you. And understand, this isn't necessarily uh, based on any particular mor uh, morality or moral principles. It's just simple uh, practicality. It's good business. If you wage war on a country, then only some segments of your economy will benefit from that. You know, weapons companies, uh, reconstruction-related industries, and so on. But there are huge segments of, uh, segments of your economy which will suffer uh, because of war. To the average Chinese business person, when they see casualty figures from, say, the war in Iraq or uh, wherever else, they see uh, from those casualty figures, well, that's just that many more people who will not be customers that we could have sold to because they're dead. That doesn't make practical sense. That's not good business sense. Forget about the moral right and wrong of it. Just from a practical business perspective, uh, casualties of war don't go shopping. Welcome back, everybody, to the BSN episode. We up there. Bonsoir, everybody. Sup, Mikey? It's good to be back in the house of Corey. How you doing, my brother? I'm doing well. Yeah. Yeah, well, for me too, man. I'm lying, man. I struggle every day. No, just... <laughs> well, <laughs> nah. I, I mean, just not even about myself. It's just the world is so crazy. But um, we're back. It's a new year. We've been on hiatus uh, for a little bit. If you haven't noticed, we've been, we disappeared. And uh, yeah, we had to take time off. For me personally, it was about um, a couple things. I have my dog. I got a new dog now, as you guys know, Falcor. He's the best ever. My little boobies. Uh, dude, Frenchies are so demanding of time. They're time, dude. I mean, and and all I was thinking in my head, like, was that study that we did on the last Gangsters of Cat World. Yeah, the last one where we were talking about child development, baby child. And they said they're just like animals. Mm -hmm. All they need well, we is. Are animals, yes. Yeah, all they need is. Uh, well, yeah, we are animals, but animals are more simplistic. So literally all they need is the person, the nurturing relationship and, and a playmate. The emotional. Right. These things are really demanding, more demanding than I knew that they'd be. Like I told Jackie today, we should have named him Wedgie, because he because he just needs to be on you or next to you or cuddled up in in between you all the time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, this dude is constantly, uh, but he's the best in the world. So it's easy, but then at the same time, I have to now start to focus on my balance. Okay. How much time do I spend with him? Well, I figured it out. He sleeps a lot. So I just read when he sleeps and make the best of that. And, but This is good training for you. I mean, this is good training if you decide to have kids in the future. Yeah, it's, it's a because lot, man. It's the same. Very similar, you know. It's very demanding. Uh, the reward, though, is uh, like no other. It, it, it is. It's well worth it. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's and you have to squeeze in your time when you can. Yeah, he's my and sanity sleeping. for sure. Yeah, I even tell that little bitch. He, I'm like, bro, you're you're saving my life. Like you literally are. I really think that, Kids do that too, he interrupted because learning all this at, at such a fast pace, binge learning all this stuff. It's dark stuff, right? It's dark material. It's it's so like I can only imagine what a therapist would say. They'd say, "Yeah, it's heavy. You grew up in America. You have this love, this connection, your identity, everything you've ever known. It's in your fiber, and you're learning all this nefarious shit about it. And now it's like still here. It's not like we're learning about it way back, like it was slavery and nothing else like is happening. Are, things aren't better now. They're just worse. It's evolved into an even bigger monster. Yeah, like you just saw the video at the beginning. It's 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 that. <laughs> so." That's hard. That's heavy. And I still cope with it. I, I meditate. I, I've been doing everything, working out, doing everything I can to uh, balance that out. And yes, taking going on a hiatus was one of them. I said, this shit is a lot. It's extra. So we're going to take a little break and we'll get back. Well, that's how you maintain 
progress. You have to you have to pause. You know, you have to maintain your own balance, like you said. Yeah, or, or if you go crazy, you're done. Yeah. If you go crazy, you're done. You can't go crazy. Then you start talking about all kinds of crazy radical shit that doesn't make sense, and, and yeah, you lose people. Yeah, I start fucking talking about the Earth being flat and shit, and all kinds of shit. Yeah. There's so many conspiracy theories out there um, that you can get rattled up in, and it's such a misguided. Uh, I hate that term because it just it's used. But there are some terrible ones, though, yeah, that, that it's like... That's what I mean. I hate it because it's like has such a stigma, the, a negative stigma to it. Yeah, I you think know? we should just get away with it and just say, hey, man, some people are weird and some people aren't. Because now we've had so many conspiracies proven to be true, um, especially if they're political or, yeah, or something like that. I mean, you know, so that's where I would stay. If they're talking about Bigfoot and shit, who gives a shit? But if they're talking about... Politics or something, I'll lend an ear and say, all right, what you got? Because everything's on the board. If if this is a poker game, there's money at stake, right? Well, there's people bluffing, and we've caught people bluffing. So why would you not think that they're continuing to bluff? It's that simple to me, you know? But people people are scared. They don't want to know shit. You know, you know how many people don't want to know? I saw, oh yeah, you know they don't want to talk about these things. Yeah, they don't want to discuss them. It, you know, how many people do you get into conversations with, and you get to a certain point where you, you know, they just shut off. Yeah, it's like no, no, no. Yeah, that, what was it? Uh, uh, that video you sent me. Uh, the guy said it's like that's where they they lose their rationality. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, you didn't lose them; they lost it. They yeah, lost I was it. making sense the yeah. whole time, but you checked out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've been rational this whole time and you agreed with everything I've said up to this point. Yeah. But yeah. But it's 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 hard because what what are we what are we doing, guys? It, you those people that do that, I don't want to just call them weak, but that is what it is. But you were made weak. You were made to think that there is no <coughs> other way. There is no alternative. So what else can I do but check out? And it's selfish too it's because evil. you go back to living your best life. So you have a a a a four percent of the population here in America, the greatest country on the planet, richest country on the planet, and we're all living our best lives individually. Three hundred thirty million people <laughs> trying to accumulate as much as we can. Nobody's getting really money at all, and we're just running around trying to live our best lives, like we say, because we're blessed in all these things. <laughs> and it's crazy. The Super Bowl just happened. You know, I didn't want to say, you know, uh, much about it, but there is political ties into this. And while it was happening, they bombed Rafa, the crossing at Rafa, at the same time during the Super Bowl. And there was pictures of the worst. And I've seen back to like shit that I didn't think I could see any worse uh, on X and, and uh, Instagram. I, I was seeing some terrible shit. And then... That night, I didn't even, I clicked on it for a second and clicked off really quick because I, I couldn't take it. I was weak at that moment. I was just like, oh, not again. I had found my checkout. But here's the thing. They can't check out. They're stuck there. And they're getting bombed in the last refuge that they said would be safe. At the very southern crossing, at the Rafa crossing, they said that that was the place to seek refuge and that was the place that would be safe. And even after they bombed it, they're just saying, well, you know, anybody that still doesn't think that this is an intentional genocide, I don't even know what to say to you at this point. You know, but there are people that don't want to know. They don't want to know. And that is a big sign of how weak we have become and how they have stolen our integrity. They don't have integrity. We have to keep our integrity. We know these people don't have any morals or principles or anything. Money is their bottom line. They teach it in the schools here. It's in academia. It's the bottom line. And when that happens, it goes without saying, but we learn the hard way. 
people will take a back seat. And they sell it to you, you know, with two or three words. They'll, you know, national security. They'll try to justify it. Right. Or or God wills it. Yeah. You know, and, and people will just jump right on that and take that and accept it and put it behind them. Like you said, they don't want to face it, what it really is, the truth of it. And part of it's ego, too. I think that, you know, you don't want to admit that you've been duped. Nobody does. You know, we oh, all have. That's a big part of it. That's a big part of it. We are proud people. It's a, you say whatever the fuck you want, but our culture is looked upon by everybody around the world. We, we're so used to being the cool kids. We don't know how to take an L. We don't know how to take constructive criticism. Well, that's un-American, you know, to take an L. Right. Constructive criticism. The average person can't take it. They think it's a shot at them just because I said something about the country. And Yeah, and I want to get one thing straight, too. It's like, you know, the things we're saying against our government isn't anti-American. We are, we're, we are, I, in my opinion, we are the most of them, um, most American. We are, the, we are the most patriotic that you can be because we're trying to stand up for the people. Yeah. We're not standing up for the oligarchs that are running this country. I think a lot of people are coming around to that though. At least it feels like it. It feels like people are finally seeing what, what we've been saying and a lot of other people have been saying and more people are saying it now. And they're starting to come around. I see a lot of people that are saying, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I explained it to two people the other day, and I was I was pleasantly surprised at how well receptive they were to my message. I was even a little harsh at first because I was having a bad day. Mm. And I I mean I wasn't disrespectful, but I was short. And then they came back and said something. And I don't know how long I took, but then I came back and I explained things to them basically along. But what I wrote was that the government that you speak of, yes, they do have an agenda, but what we have to identify that agenda. And that's where class analysis comes uh, in handy, because when you have class analysis, then you can see how uh, interests push policy. And 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 then you could take this gray shit that doesn't make sense when you turn on the news every day and you could actually make sense of it. And it does make sense. And then you see the patterns and you're like, oh my God, this is this is intense. Because what do we do? <laughs> so I believe that people are coming around right now. And and I'm you know, I I think that that's a beautiful thing because like Lennon said, sometimes you go decades and nothing happens and then you could go weeks and decades happen. Yeah. I think that it's very possible we might be warming up to a time where decades happen in weeks. That would be a good thing for America. And I think that, you know, if, if people like us, if we don't handle it ourselves, if Americans don't handle it ourselves, then somebody else will and probably not going to like it. Right. So what I was explaining to her was just like that and saying that these elitists have no allegiance to our country. What they're doing, right, is since the computer revolution, especially, they were outsourcing millions of our jobs overseas to get cheaper labor because we were going on strike and doing all these strikes and sitting on strikes and all kinds of shit. There was very big unions were at their highest. And since then, they have decimated them. So... That was one. So they outsourced all these jobs. And this is what I was explaining to these ladies. I said, then when this happened, the, uh, the, everything, the Rust Belt, I said, think of Detroit, you know, one of the best, uh, then taxes stopped getting paid in there because you lost all the jobs. People go poor, uh, less money to the, to the less money. Just so, so less taxes are getting paid, less things. So there's nothing to develop. So it becomes less and less developed, low income area. And then no help, no help. And we're just, and, and uh, so, so those jobs, viral. those jobs, they're just finding out how to uh, take those jobs out that whole time. 
Then when we finally do say, hey, what the hell is happening to our wages over here? And we decide to go on strike over here. Well, now they are, they are a multinational co co uh, company and they can just lift their wages over here. If we strike, they, they could shut the plant down. They have so much money and wealth, concentrated wealth. They could just shut that whole fucking business down. Amazon done it already. When they, I can't remember which one it was. It was New York or something. But when they got up and organized, they just ended up shutting it down. So we, this is a problem. This is a huge problem because they're just going to keep pushing our wages down. You know, and I, I'm doing good right now. Mike's doing good right now. We're not talking about us, right? We're fighting for the man next to us because we understand the statistics. We know what's happening. We talk to people in the, in the streets and we have our finger on the pulse of this shit. So, and we're follow up a lot on everything. So we're well, well versed in this stuff at this point. Now, world politics, you know, I'm still learning about certain things, but, um, but for this domestically, it's cheating because then they hide their taxes offshore. They, hide, they have offshore bank accounts hiding their tax money. So yeah. we, have, we have to make up for that shit too. And then, so, so there's no money. So tell me what's more anti-American than that shit. I don't give a fuck if you got a house here. If you're destroying our country like that and you're not developing anything... I don't give a fuck if you launch space rockets off the fucking coast over here. I don't care. Develop something. Build something. They've kept Americans so fat, dumb, and happy and distracted for the last 20 years, 30 years. that They've been up there in Capitol Hill passing legislation just to protect their positions. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, it's almost powerless to do something about it, you know. Yeah. And they haven't, you know, when was the last time they, you know... They passed the law, you know, on a large scale that covers the mass population. It's a great, that's a great question. Hey, let's question. do something for the taxpayers, all taxpayers. Okay, not LGBTQP, not, 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 not any, it's just all taxpayers. It doesn't matter what, what your nationality is, what your race, what your religion, right. your sexual orientation, it doesn't matter. Right. You know, but they keep us divided like that and squabbling over crumbs when they could do something for everybody across the board. You know, it's as simple as that. And they blame Republicans and Democrats when they get the last minute can't get it done. And they say, well, and they just ought say some bullshit, parliamentarian or whatever oh, well, the fuck you know, it is. This, and, this, and, this bill that was designed to help, you know, you know, 40, uh, you know, million Americans is, you know, we decided to include, a, you know, an arms package for Ukraine and Israel, too. Yeah. Why does that got to be mixed in? Yeah. You know. It's all propaganda. It is, the, yeah, exactly. They're they're selling you guys on shit that's like, oh well, it, socialism's free shit and stuff, and it's like, no, it's not. Socialism is going to take money out of your pocket, you hardworking Americans. No, yeah, it isn't. yeah, no, it's yeah. going to put money in it. Margaret Thatcher said, "Socialism is will never work because it's when you run out of other people's money," and it's like, it's like, uh -huh. uh, but that's but but shit like that. Makes everybody go, yes, because we're parrots. And we don't put any thinking into anything. They have dumbed us down to just, we think that we are receiving news and shit. <laughs> right, right. We think that we're getting smarter and informed by what they tell us. That is completely <laughs> not the truth. It, it, it's Without thinking on your own. Quickly, yeah, it's or, completely you know. unhinged, especially today. It, it is not even like when I turn it on. I could only ride that bull for so long. I get upset. Oh, it's yeah, it's disgusting. It's nauseating. I can't stand it. But now more than ever, I'm noticing who those eight second attention span motherfuckers are. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're I'm seeing them. It's demoralizing. You see, there's a lot of them. But there's a but I was that too. I had to fucking get better at reading again and shit when I started reading again and shit and had to do all that stuff and and. That's the message, man. But even when, you know, you were on the other team, okay, your team, when you had a team, you know what I'm saying? And when I was working for the Empire, didn't you, I'm sure, like me, always have that question inside of you? You've questioned it. Yes. You've come, because you've seen some fucked up shit. Always. You've seen the hypocrisy. Like, always question what happened to MLK. I'm on, I'm on this team and... Uh, Always question what happened to MLK. I never heard one bad thing about him, but then I heard rumors that he was the FBI's most wanted and shit. That shit didn't make no sense to me. I'm looking at this little baby face 
old man that was that was really nice and polite and singing uh, 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 great gospel verses and stuff. Oh, the dude, but he was an adulterer and da 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 da, da and he was like, yeah, okay, you know, and uh, human? yeah, all right. I felt like I was always going to learn about him. When I when I talk yeah. about that gravitational pull, I don't want to get into that shit right now because. But see, some people don't have that. I don't think I don't think they look. I don't so think don't, they let themselves have it, or they were robbed of it. So maybe we were something like them, but we're not them, right? Is it like I told you, man? It's because we did this. It's only because we did this. We were honest and we said, "Look, bro, we'd still be a conservative, Mike, fucking liberal ass Corey." If we never picked up a microphone and actually gave a fuck what we were putting out, but into we knew the world. that there was a truth out there to be had, and maybe this would help get it. Yes. Well, our initial goal, if you remember, was just unity. Yeah. We said we wanted a podcast where everybody felt welcome to come talk, and we could lift your voice and respect you, and nobody's gonna laugh at you around here. We'll beat them up. That's basically what it was. it was. It was everybody feels welcome. We want a place where everybody feels warm, welcome, and fuzzy and could just, just enjoy themselves and, and have some laughs and whatever. That's what we started. But then it got political and then we started realizing that there were some real roots to these things. And then we got off of it. We had the initial reaction of normal people do. It's like, yo, let's just stop this because I love you. You love yeah. me. Let's fucking get off this, dude, because it's not going to get good. It's going to tear us apart. Gonna tear us, but it brought us, us together. It brought us extra together because yeah. you went on your hiatus because you had your son's issue and stuff. And then when you came back, you had read... Um, History of the uh, you know, People's History. People's History yeah, by, yeah. by Howard Zinn. Yeah. And I had read a lot of books. And then we were talking in between. Right. And we were having phone calls. And it built into, holy shit, dude. Have you heard about this? Holy shit, have you heard this? Yeah, I, well, let's confirm it. Okay, this, I, I confirm this, this over this here. I confirm this, this over here. Yeah, this, this is, okay, they, okay. They correlated. Yes. The history and, and we, you, you know, and the present. Correct. And we Before. stayed in bounds the whole time. We were staying in bounds. We weren't going out of bounds in some fucking conspiratorial. We were staying factual based mm -hmm. uh, things that that we can verify all throughout. Confirm, confirm, confirmed actual uh, either speeches, uh, data. Data actually obtained from government sources. Government sources. sources. Government the sources census, are critical. Government census. Government. We stayed in bounds. Institute. So we stayed in bounds. Yeah. yeah. And then and then when I said, Mike, I'm coming back, because I had to move from Lake Lily to the queue. And I remember I went on, I was like, that was when I said, All right. I, I got to a point where I was like, I gotta just um stop podcasting for a second. And I have to just read as much shit as I can as I'm moving to this new apartment. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was the time. <sighs> Dude, you want to talk about we it, dude? Like I stayed up and, all yeah, night, dude. I yeah. was sweating and shit. I was just, I was doing all kinds of studying. Just, just fucking telling Mike every day new shit, new shit, new shit. That's when I, was at, I was at Shock Doctrine and then I was learning. Like, yeah, we were really, reading some books really together. Into, uh, yeah, studying humanities. And yes, like we, we read books together. Yes. Absolutely. And then, um, but that was after. I'm talking about oh. when, when I moved to, right, to, right. Dude, I read so much shit, and then that's when I was like, "Okay, all right, we're doing it." <laughs> yeah, this this is real shit right here, man. I was really, really convinced with scientific socialism, the real socialism, not Obama's, Biden's, and and Bernie's. They're not socialists. Those that's not socialism when you get free shit and the government does shit. That's what they don't want you to know. That's what they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know that there's a better way. And it's so fucked up, but just like you saw in that video at the very beginning, that that's reality. And if you do your research, you'll find that out. And some people don't want to know it. Some people know it. And some people are in the middle of finding it out. And I'm learning more and more about it. I've, I'm past that threshold where I was challenging my own thoughts. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was doing that a lot. I was doing, while I was in that transition to the queue. And then once I moved over here, it was... It was on. Um, I knew everything. that I, I knew I was hunting in the right direction at that point. I said, okay, now I can only learn more and stuff. You, you recognize the truth. Yeah, yeah. And now and now I'm just on a mad hunt just saying, okay, I, I just need to build my mind and just keep learning, keep absorbing, keep spreading whatever awareness that I can do to enlighten people to at least 
look at it themselves, understand that, hey, man, what you got on your shoulders is very special. You have a God-given brain on your shoulders. Now, these God-fearing people, I think a lot of them forget that. And I think they donate, like I said, their brain to these people, these news channels and whatnot, to just say, here, man, fill, fill me up with whatever you got. And they forget about how valuable that empty thing up in there really is and what it potentially can do and how it is a computer. And the more things you download it into it, you will process things. Information plus more information sometimes equals or actually doesn't. Eventually it equals some, a thought of yours. It will grow into a thought and it will be a thought. And when you do that, you are getting somewhere and you're helping everybody, not just yourself. You're helping yourself a lot because it's it's great. It's 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 very freeing when you understand what's plaguing you and you don't feel like you're really going to get invaded by fucking Russia at any moment and shit, you know, and like, really, you know, I'm sure you didn't really fucking worried about that anyway. But there are people that are worried about that 24 seven. And um, what do you say to the ones that are happy with the way things are that are that have had a good, a decent life? Not I'm not saying like wealthy, but, you know, what I'm saying like. Say like our our bosses are certain managers, you know. That, well, let me that, go to that, let me go to know, a little bit like, less than bosses. Let's go. Let's go to just the wealthy, the wealthy like liberals and wealthy conservatives, right? I would say to them that the people like, well, you should have just done what I did. You know, I'm I worked out for me, so fuck well, I would say to you, I would say, say to those people. Well, that, that was the labor. Board. That was intentional. That was the labor of aristocracy. They they said that we have to pay white suburban people more money than black people because when we do that it's gonna it's gonna say it's gonna give us support when we go into these wars and when we're gonna need people to say hey no this is good shit man we we need you're gonna need people in the trenches that's yeah. right yeah. And when, yeah, yeah that makes sense and when, dude yeah. and when you and when you do that and then people it keeps you from rising up it keeps a group of people and well, you can you, spread you this say to those people? but you can also push the message of upward mobility you say look at all these white people they got money and you you can have it too. And it gets really confusing because now, you know, that's workers. When you get into the celebrities and stuff and the entertainers, then it just con confuses people even more because they start seeing it and they go, well, everybody's got money. We got a black president. And then don't realize that he voted, you know, his Senate voting record was all for capitalists and shit. And it was just totally corporate stuff. So, you know, it's just a big ball of bullshit and they're selling it to you, man. And eventually... If you want to fucking learn about it, do it. And if not, then fuck it. But, you know, don't tell somebody they're wrong when you ain't put in the fucking work to actually understand it. Because that is wrong to do to somebody, actually. I would say that. That's, that's important to know. Because I'll say this, too. There's a lot of people, including myself, that have family members that have died in war, right? I imagine when they hear these things, they they automatically check out because they think of it like he died correctly. He didn't die in vain. But evolution is a real thing, right? So especially with all these wars in play right today, now we realize that they're profiteering literally off these wars. Okay. That's all they're about. They're not about winning wars. They're about having endless wars why Julian Assange is in fucking jail for 200 years and he's not even American <laughs> so at the end of the day when you have all these wars if you don't want it to be in vain if I don't want my family members that have died at war to be in vain then we must make it right because that's the only way to have that's progress that's what that's what it is that's moving forward because if we keep going this way and keep letting them fucking kill workers have workers from this country kill workers from that country and vice versa to it's it's never we're never you could see it we're out of gas already it's over it's over right now we're just spinning our wheels but the point still remains let's not let the soldiers that have already come and gone. Let's make it. They all had good intention. We owe it they to were them. Great. We owe it to them. Good. That's let me say. We owe it to them to 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 let the truth out 
about what they died for. We owe it to them. And it's not taking away anything from them. It's not disgracing them or dishonoring them in any way, shape, or form. It's actually, to me, it's bringing more honor to them because they sacrificed their life for what they believed in. And it's no, it's nothing against them. Look at what they and did they to were, Pat and, Tillman. But see, and it's up, left to us to rectify that situation because they were sold a lie. All right? And you can't live the lie. You can't continue it. you got to bring the truth out. Yeah. And that will honor them more than anything. Yes. All right? You want to talk about wars? Yeah, there hasn't been a war fought for freedom or even national security since, the, you know, World War II. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yep. Uh, the Forgotten War. Yeah, the for- Forgotten War. That's what it is. The Forgotten War. I'm learning about that right they now. They wanted you to forget about that one. They killed 20. We killed 20 to 30 percent of their civilian population. We bombed every. There wasn't a two-story building in the northern northern of the peninsula uh, left. the The pilots. There was a pilot that radioed in and asked, "Hey, what's going on?" You know, and I. Uh, they they bombed for another two weeks or two months, and there was nothing. They were like, "Hey, man, there's nothing left to bomb," and they still bombed. They just kept bombing. It's it's insane. So. I actually want to talk about, uh, oh, I forgot. Mikey, guess what? I got good news, actually. Hmm. We might be able to get monetized on here. On on what? On this. On this. The new YouTube rules. Well, I looked it up. I don't know how new they are, but it says that just they're taking views and money away from people that swear use profanity and especially f-bombs so they say you can use a few you could you could say Hmm. it but you just can't if it's excessive then so i think there's a possibility we might be able to see a paycheck in this thing oh boy that would be so cool right some money towards the revolution um okay Right. So I have to say this. Oh, the Super Bowl. That's right. I was. I, I forgot to say. This is so true too. Have you seen any videos about people after the Super Bowl breaking their uh, TVs? No. Oh, there's people actually just. I mean, I've seen it before, but people are just breaking their TVs over the Super Bowl and over, stuff. Yeah, again. And. Uh, I think about that and I was like, yo, you should say something about that. Because the first thing that came to mind, especially now, and especially since the Super Bowl, there was a massacre in Rafa. They're calling it the Super Bowl massacre. Um, I wish we could get that upset at our politics. Imagine if we had that that energy. We've been been taught that that's how you don't talk politics or religion. Yeah. Maybe we should. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I think it's time. Hey, don't do. talk about that because you might come to an understanding. Yeah. All right. Don't don't do that. Yeah. That'd be dangerous if you guys actually started making sense and shit, educating yourself to these things that we've been lying about the whole time. That'd be pretty problematic. Yeah. And look, well, ask he's you right. Some- we we can bounce back. That's the message. There is hope. They just don't want us to think there is. Look they, at the they, shit our government's doing to other countries and think about what if other countries were doing this to us? What the fuck would you do about it? You would be fucking radicalized too. Amen. I'd be blowing some shit up. I mean, it's it's just I'd be I'd be doing whatever I can. That's what I was explaining to this lady today. I said, Look, um, if you're in an occupation, which is now a death camp, um, and you're stuck in there, and since two thousand six they have you on a caloric intake. Uh, they call it a starvation plus diet. They're only importing food. They're seeing everything. And by the way, they got videos and stuff of Hamas burning the the bread and stuff. The good the goods coming in, or not Hamas. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, IDF yeah, burning the burning the bread and stuff coming in there and stuff. But um, and then now they're they're blocking the aid routes. They got a bunch of Israeli cars out there, and they're blocking the fucking only aid coming in there, which isn't much at all. 
And I'm not even sure any aid's getting in there. I don't think it can. Uh, I don't see how. And so everybody's starving. They're getting diseases and they're getting bombed to death. And the pictures I saw that night of the Super Bowl, I had to click it off real quick. I just saw a baby with both her legs blown off. And she was like blown into his I, It was so fucking terrible. I, I was like, yo, we should be able to sue America just for this. Like, like, like our tax dollars, it tra- it's traumatizing, at least at the small T trauma to me, that m- I have a part in this. Like, like th- there's no, there's no other we way around to, it. Yeah, dude. we went to fund that. Yeah, we funded that. I have a part in this. So $10.4 million a day. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And and now there's not a place they haven't touched. And it's and it's not about Hamas. They want that land. They want the resources underneath it. They it's a continuation. There never was a two state solution because there was already thousands of settlements in the West Bank. So there's never a possibility for it to be a two state solution. That's all bullshit. They've been moving in the whole time. So what would you think, Not besides the fact there was no Hamas before 1987, what would you think they were doing since 1948 to 1967? Hmm, probably the same fucking thing that they've been doing to today. Whatever they want. And it's always puzzled me since in my lifetime, since I was old enough to think of my own, like, why does Israel get away with anything and everything? They get away with atrocities. They get away with genocide. They have since the beginning of time because they've always been labeled the victim. And it's nothing anti-Semitic or anything like that. It no. It's just, but they've played that card to where they abuse it. Yeah. Well, they ha- they are an oppressed people from throughout history. So that's the card you're talking about. Yeah. And 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 what they what, what they never what, gives, what they you, never remember gives, is that you have been abused by Europe. Europe is what fucked you up. That 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 area of the world is what fucked you up. The the Arab population did not fuck you up. They, did, they don't have anything. They've been Jews down there for forever, living peaceably. So 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 that's bullshit. And if you don't want to acknowledge that, that's fine. But but you really should because, because we're living in a point in history that is uh there's so the depending on how you look at it. It's an opportunity, it's a challenge, or it's defeatism, if you want to take their word for it. And it's degrowth. And they're just going to make you feel terrible about yourself all day. And they're going to tell you you're fat and ugly and you need this pill and this fucking thing to lose this weight and whatever. And they're going to just sell you every fucking thing until you can't take no more. And they're going to push this toxic society down your fucking throat. I used an F-bomb. Um, I probably used a bunch before that. I'm but the point it but the point is that whatever demonetize me one more so whatever <laughs> the point is that we are weak because this society has molded us into this broken alienated population that's that's really scared of each other to a certain degree now we got our guns and we're loading up and we're kind of like hey man I don't really trust anybody out here we got it like I get it but that's the strategy. That's what they want. And we can't let them achieve that, guys. Because this is it. This isn't a Netflix show. This isn't a movie. This is real life happening right now. This is history in the making. And we got to do something about it. And the good news is 95% of the protests in the world were pro-Palestine. And if you're pro-Palestine, you're pro-liberation. You have to, you're, we're, we're not just liberating Palestine. We're liberating all people. That's what this is about. This is a humanity thing. This is a this should never happen to anybody thing. It could be ten seven should have never happened to you guys. It, people say, oh well, does Israel have the right to defend them? Yet yeah, on ten seven, yes, absolutely, but not like this. Not killing thirty thousand people and just devastating, blowing up every hospital, every school, every refugee camp, every mosque, every every everything, even the cemetery. No, not like this. What do you mean, like we did in Iraq and Afghanistan? Yes, exactly. 
And I actually have something about that too, because that's a good, I'm glad you brought that up because I can segue right into this because people now are saying Iran is the puppet master behind all this. And if you don't want to believe General Wesley Clark, uh, he said his own words, we're going he, he, years ago, <laughs> Iran was on the list. That was the, yeah, that was the end all beat all. I ran. Yeah. 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 So, 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 so we have the, the, their own words saying, but if you don't want to believe that, it's important I that I suggest. That all the time, man. That guy. That yeah. Guy, I mean, he was just like letting it all out. Yeah. And because he was upset. I He's like, that. you mean to tell me we're not about, like, dude, this is fucked up. His reaction is real. Like, we should all feel like that, but we should be motivated. To do something about that and not just take an L on on the greatest L of all time, which could be all of our lives. Gaza could be anybody right now. And and we shouldn't stand for it because it's 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 And that could be a beginning. It doesn't stop there. It goes global. It comes here to America. Yeah. Let's stand up for ourselves, man. Let's get things right, dude. Things are fucked up, man. There's no reason for humanity to be in. I don't want to feel is. hopeless. I don't want to feel like this. The last time I felt this fucking hopeless was when 9-11 happened and there was people. Uh, it was when they were either jumping to a uh, hundred stories to their death or burn alive was their fucking decision. That shit has stuck with me ever since. And then when I found out that we funded bin Laden and the Mujahideen. In the 80s, and that was a, essentially a boomerang that came back and hit us in our fucking head. And look, we funded we funded Saddam Hussein and Saddam Hussein the CIA, in the seventies, yeah, seventies yeah. against Iran, sixties and seventies, yeah, yeah, and, and and yeah. So he didn't want to do business with us anymore. We brought him to power, and then we went and took him out and killed a million people, and 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 now more people because in Fallujah. Depleted uranium is just to the point where doctors are telling the women to don't have kids because the, the babies are so deformed when they're coming out. They just, we can't save them. Do not have children is the problem. That's how bad that shit is. And that's a war crime too. And cluster bombs and all that other foul shit we use and the chemical weapons and the fucking whatever else. So here. So back to Ron. I wrote down a couple things because it is helpful to remember these things in this situation. Now, we're being told Iran is the mastermind, right? Well, that it, it, we're, it, we say that they're not really interested in Palestine. It's out of innate hatred for the United States and the Jewish people, right? That's propaganda. Okay, so we're going to go through here and uh, see what... What we could find. Okay, well, here it is. Who sanctioned Iran in the early years after their 1979 revolution? And multilaterally under the UN for decades got sanctioned. That was the United States of America. And that was following the coup that we did in 1953 to... Uh, Place the Shah in power. Yes. Yep, to put the, yep, to put the Shah in power. Correct. Why? Oil. <laughs> fucking resources god so ah that's two okay i shouldn't have thought about it that now i'm messing up Sorry. i just got to come up with a different alternate f-bomb i just it's got to be like uh you know Fuck. falcor i can see falcor but i don't want to use his name was fargan fargan so who invaded iraq and and bombed iraq across the 1990s and 2000s United States, who invaded Lebanon in 1982 and created the emergence of Hezbollah, Israel under the protectorate of the United States of America, who had wars in Yemen from 2004 onward, 2015 onward, funding and using regional allies, uh, which was the Saudi Arabia, we were funding them, that was the United States, who went into uh, 2013 supporting terrorists, <clears throat> and rebels attempting to overthrow and destabilize Syria. That was United States. And by the way, we're we are we talk all this shit about Putin invading Ukraine when they actually went up to his doorstep and was provoked. 
And when he wanted neutrality and stuff, if you didn't watch the Tucker Carlson interview, I highly recommend you go back and watch that shit because he, uh, and notice how Tucker didn't push back on any of that shit because we're full of shit. Um, but we are occupying a third of Syria. They're, and guess what third it is? It's their oil fields and their wheat fields. And guess what it's doing? It's causing 90% of their population to be under the poverty line. None of them have full bellies. <clears throat> who during the 2000, a lot of people don't know this, who during the 2006 election in Palestine results uh, showing Hamas was winning blocks Hamas from going to power and relegate them to Gaza. That was United States. Uh, yeah, so the problem is not Iran, Syria, Lebanon, or any of these places, Yemen. The problem is when these places go against the American project of domination. These problems are when they go against, you know, or are a product, a byproduct of U.S. foreign policy. And you have to ask yourself, like, would you tolerate occupation with foreign troops occupying lands in this country? Fuck no. Why would you think that anybody else would, you know, just tilt nipple to that? And, and, and right. I don't know. It, it, it just is, it's beyond me, man. I, I can't understand why you can how someone can live with that level of hypocrisy you know in their mind and think that it's all right and you know we are the cause of the need for our level of fucking national security supposedly you know we are we're the cause of the threats that come from around the world i think about sometimes when i told you about hoagie being hypnotized i think about if that would have if i would have just now seen it today like if today would have been the day where I saw him get hypnotized for the first time, it right. wouldn't have surprised me like it did before. Really? Yeah, because look at everybody. Look at what the fuck they're talking about, dude. Yeah. Look at what the fuck they're supporting. They're talking about voting for Biden because Trump could be in office when he was already in office for four years. And they're saying that this is a make it or break it. We can't. We got to do this or it's all over. We're going to lose democracy. Oh, it's a threat to democracy. It's a threat to democracy. And we're going <coughs> to. And, and, and all this shit, man. And we can't even get reforms on gerrymandering or. And until we do. And until we do, we do not have a fucking democracy. Folks. We don't have a democracy now. We don't even have a republic. Yeah. They're up there writing laws and legislation to protect their positions. Yeah. And they're not writing laws that protect the people. Yes. They think a, a tr multi-trillion dollar defense budget is, is enough. Which we can't pass one fucking audit for. A fucking uh, Pentagon. Uh, we failed out every audit so far. Oh, wow. You, we can't account for half our assets. Dude. All this means is as soon as the people take over, there's potential to fix shit. If they could fuck up this bad and we're still just chilling... We could get out of debt. We can figure this out. We could establish a new government, figure out our own principles and do our do our own thing and ha establish a real d democratic republic and, and, and do our own thing. Why not? Why couldn't we? That's what building your mind is all about. And don't let them get in your head and, and divide us anymore because, you know, laws could be written for everyone. They don't have to be subjugated to certain groups specifically it's not for you know it's for everybody everybody yep the minute they try to just to divide that up they're just trying to divide us look the whole world really needs us you want to talk about some some purpose you want to have purpose you want to do something i guarantee your life will turn around if you start doing this i guarantee whatever's going bad or if you got dark stuff going on in your life or if you can't figure something out and uh, and you haven't really been advocating for nothing or really investing in anything. You don't even have to go out and speak. I guarantee if you pick up a book and you start learning stuff, I guarantee you're going to notice a change in yourself. And you're gonna and you're gonna start and you're gonna start doing. You're gonna have direction. You're gonna just something's gonna click. I guarantee it. Because what we're learning about isn't just anything. 
it's everything. It really is. It's not a cliche thing. It's, it, it's everything. It's the future of humanity. It's the future of potential species. We're wasting all half the ocean's dead. Once the ocean dies, we're all dead. You realize that, right? I hope you know that. Once the ocean dies, we're all dead. And we're just shipping products to and from fucking China and everything, talking about blowing them up and stuff. We're like a half a thread away from fucking losing it all. Taiwan, chips, they they control like so much of our uh, commerce. And then we like want to fight them. It's like, like, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You don't even have to be anything to see that this is fucking just going to be terrible for the people. All China has to do is go, oh, we're going to stop shipping you products tomorrow. Okay. So you guys want to play ball with us. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because not only do they supply like everything, but even if we had another country to help us out with food or something and we can weather a famine, which I don't think we could, but even if we could, they still ship us parts to make food and other shit. So it'd be so broke down. It'd be so gone. And then we'd finally understand what it feels like to get sanctioned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for the first time. But if anybody could do it, they can. Yeah, at this point, yeah. And we're and that's like what uh Putin said to Tucker Carlson. He said, You guys should be upset because you're hurting yourselves by not doing business with everybody. You should do it, but it's so monopolized right now. The wealth is so concentrated that yeah, individuals are that's profiting why from doing business with right, certain people. Right. And that's why it, And they're profiting from sanctioning yeah. because they're shutting down business from other people, they're crushing people and, and livelihood. And then they're profiting even more and more. Well, and more. Denied, it's a yeah. fucking, it's just one percent, the one fucking percent. It really is the one percent. You're not talking about your average Joes that are rich. We're not talking about those people. It's very important to know that too. And we're not talking about those people who are bad either. We're talking about the system that made all this shit is what's bad. We're not mad at any particular person, even though Elon fucking looks like my dick. <laughs> You know, and it's uh, it's practically impossible for so many people to even imagine. I, and I hate to use that word imagine because to say imagine means not possible, but it is very possible. Imagine a life or picture a life where you don't have to worry about medical care, where you don't have to worry about eating, where you don't have to worry about proper housing, you know? And it's not the, the what the... the government housing that that exists today not on that level that's the bare minimum that's that's crumbs you know uh i'm just saying that imagine a life with no worries about basic needs imagine how much it society could prosper in humanity yeah it's uh you know and, and that's all being stifled for the greater good of profit for Fuck. a few handful of individuals imagine if it was a law because you had a socialist government and not a capitalist government that you can't charge 5% of your income, more than 5% of your income for your housing. That sound bad to you? That shit's fucking awesome. And imagine, like he said, everybody could see a doctor. Everybody could get education. <coughs> everybody do this. And by the way, we're not getting it. And we're making more money as a result. And no, we're not all getting equal pay. There's still a hierarchy. There's going to be people that do shit better than other people and they're going to pay yeah. more. That's just the natural way of life. They lie about that too. They lie about every fucking exactly. thing. Exactly. I'm glad you said that. They lie about everything. And I want to say one other thing. Albert Einstein, I want to go back to uh, what you said about anti-Semitism. He's right. It's not anti-Semitism. It's anti-Zionism. And there's Jews that are anti zionist So that's how you fucking know it's a real thing. And it's it's seller colonialism is what I, I, I forgot. I don't know. I, sh- I I just wanted to mention that. I wanted to pu- put that in there and let you understand that they equate Judaism with Zionism in order to, they they uh, convolute it to make it seem like it's just, it's just what it is. It's Judaism, but it's not. Zionism is its own fucking thing and it's settler colonialism. And this is how the whole thing happened. They used Britain to get the fucking money. And they use their fucking war and they use their power to push their way in there and do what they're doing. And there's a lot of history behind it. I, I recommend you read Elian Pape, you read Norman Finkelstein, you read Max Blumenthal. He's got a book called Goliath, which is fucking great. Uh, there's a lot of books. There's a lot of uh, people <coughs> you can get your hands on. And I want to make sure that you understand that and go do that because you want to be on the right side of this history. No doubt. No doubt. And you know why there isn't free health care in this country? Because 
this government wants you to keep working until you're 65, 67, and now 70 years old, you know, so you can pay those bills that keep you healthy enough to keep working. Right. Well, this is also what it is. How much do we save? Somewhere between 10 billion and 750 billion if we give everybody free health care. Was that the numbers of the four congressional proposals, if I remember correctly? It was something like that. It was something like 10 billion. It was billions all the way through. It was like 10 billion. And I remember the top number. It was 750 billion. Save. That goes back. Think about what these fucking predatory health insurance companies are fucking raping us. Think about how much fucking money that is. By this point in the year of our Lord 2021, everyone should know that the U.S. healthcare system is objectively terrible. It would make a whole lot more sense to do what all the other wealthy countries do and implement a universal healthcare system. So what's it gonna cost? According to a Congressional Budget Office report, the most thorough and extensive of its kind, we need to consider not what it will cost to implement, but how much we'll save by implementing it. The report is incredibly comprehensive, and if you'd like to read it yourself, I've left a link in the description. But the bottom line is this. The report took four proposed universal healthcare plans and ran the numbers. They found that every single one of them would save us tens or hundreds of billions of dollars per year, ranging from 42 billion to 743 billion. Yeah. Think about an agenda when you have that much money and people rapidly populating. Think about how things kind of change. And then when you have this kind of money where you have single individuals that have more money than entire governments, if there's a maximum wage, it should be that. But once you have this situation, it's it's only obvious that a person's going to think that they're holy, that they're on some level, that they can do these types of things to innocent people and, and justify it, like the man said at the beginning, and justify the means and dehumanize these people and, and, and get these people living and abuse them so bad that they think that they deserve it. Yeah, they think that they don't know a favor. They think they're living good. Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy times. It's uh, we stop and think about it. Like I said, people don't want to face it. Yeah. Kind of truth. Dude, <laughs> you guys want a future or not? Why don't we have free education in this country? Why? Because they want to keep. A certain level of a population uneducated. Yeah. For control purposes. So they get fed media and think they're receiving knowledge. Yeah, and I take that personally, and that's why I'm fucking binge learning everything right now. You're not pulling shit over on me. Uh uh-uh. uh. I, I was out playing hoops and shit. He was playing a guitar. You know, you know what we're doing now? We're going hard. We're going hard. And we encourage you too, because we need you. The future needs you, revolution needs you. We all need you. But, uh, we're just yeah. abandoning that blind obedience. We just want you to open up your mind, mind. you yeah. know, and uh, to, to reason and logic and just put a little bit of effort in it because you're better than that. You know, you, you can, you have the ability. We all do. Yeah. If you're, if you're reading, you know, if you're reading your, your right wing libertarian stuff, read some left wing shit. But not, I'm not talking about Hillary Clinton. Or Obama shit. I'm talking about Lenin, some some real shit. Uh, and don't read the CIA material. See, that's another thing. They got things, you know, about Stalin and Lenin that are just shitty books. You know, kind and it's just, just terrible things. They say that they killed all these fucking people, and it just highlights the famine and says that was everything, and then that was it. You know, they so so read some Perini. Yeah, yeah, read everything. Just become a fucking happy intellectual because I promise you, man, this shit is getting trash. It's just brain rot today. Uh, Everything you're seeing today is brain rot and it's intentionally designed to shorten your attention span. I'm convinced now that I know that the average American has an eight second attention span and people overseas are making fun of us for it. Fuck that. Let's get up. Let's fight back. And let's show them how fast we could bounce back. Because we're the motherfuckers. And and not so we can fight them. Because we need because they need us. And we actually need to get up. And we need to be the real partners of the world. The real 
you know, the, the the real people that we're supposed to be, man. Yeah, look into it. Look and see and do some research and see how the rest of the world views Americans. Not just one group, but many. Especially you now, man. Hey, you're, you're not. Look into why. Don't look. It's going to. Yeah. You won't like it. Don't and, and look. Put, yeah, leave your ego at the door. Just learn about the history yourself because you will naturally understand. And then you'll be able to sympathize with those people. And then they'll welcome you more because you already know the history and you're coming a whole different level to them. And you're saying, yo, I understand. They say, yeah, okay. All right, let me. Then they, then they bring you in in your fucking family. Why not be the ones? Why not be the generation to stop this bullshit yeah. that we've been imposing on the rest of the world? Let's stop that. And then you know what? We'll be welcome with open arms. Dude, we can, and we're going to bring America back. Because if we don't... For real, for real? Yeah, the threat will be for real if we don't. The threat is already for real. And But you know what's funny though, talking about threats, when I, it's like you turn on the news and you get mad because it's like, how many times you hear, China's a threat, China threat, China threat. What What kind of threat? No, they're not coming rolling over with tanks. No, they're, they're an economic threat. You know what else yeah. I heard? Yeah, he, it's so Bro, Bro, the, well, the, the, we reach 1.5 degrees uh, global warming uh, temperature rise, 1.5 degrees Celsius. It's, it, it went up 1.5 degrees, so we reached that. And they, they were, t- remember all the bad things we figuring out about that? Um, we're there already. And these people that are saying that it's not real, guys, they've had scientists that already wrote reports, Exxon, Mobil, and shit. You can look it up from 1959. There was the first, at least, mm-hmm. report that I saw. And they cr- put the kibosh on it. They got rid of it because they didn't want people to know that the fucking... Earth was actually heating up, and this was going to cause problems. We saw how much it would cost to fix it. Yes, <laughs> yes, and, and now it's like six hundred trillion, I think, or some shit, with all the all the climate damage that we have to to date, or it's going to be that much or something. That's more than all the money in the in the world. So if you think about it, we're so fucked. We're, no. You know, two thousand and eight, we were almost fucked. Two thousand and eight, they almost stopped delivering bread and milk. It would cost six hundred. Like everything, she was about to shut down. We were this close in two thousand and eight to shit shutting the fuck down. I know, but wait, you said it cost six hundred trillion dollars in what kind of economy? Our economy, our current, the whole economy, global, capitalistic. I, it was economy. an. It, I think we, we have the means and resources and the labor to do it. I don't remember if so it was, if if it was for right the now. Good of humanity. All I have to do is be provided with a fucking life, a quality life. That's true. That's a good. It doesn't have that's to a cost good, that that's, much. That's a great things, point. That's great my point. thing. Like things don't call, have to cost okay. as much as you hear. Why do you believe that? Why is that? Yeah, it's like accepted. No, it will cost that much in this economy. In this capital. Nobody system. questions why the gas goes up and down it's every windy, day. Man. Why? It doesn't have to be that much. No, that they're just saying it does because they want to profit that much, right? And and nobody questions. Like I never question why gas goes that. up and down every day. It's like why does gas go up and down every day? Why? Well, like like we should know. Like that's weird. Yeah, it's fucking weird. Prices and shit just go up and down. Like soap isn't soap. They why watch their f- bank account go, dude. We just did our. Uh, Finances, well, I didn't, Jackie did. But, dude, we're overspending still. We're trying to cut back. And we're still overspending. Shit is expensive. Oh, yeah, man. Shit is expensive. So, we're fucking grinding right now. And, um, yeah, man, I can only imagine how the fucking average person is. That's all you have to do. Look at your life, how that context is. And then think about what this, what's that? I think it's 60% now. I think it's 60 or 64%. 64%. We'll go with it. Fuck it. What's the difference between 60 and 64%? 64% of America makes 30000 and less. Dude. That's shit. And if you're single, how are you supposed to live? We found out 50% of homeless people have jobs. Yeah. We found that out. Working homeless. Fucking unsure or in their car or some shit. Let me put it to you like this. In any And you wonder why the immigrants are coming in? They're welcoming that shit in because nobody wants to work these fucking wages. I'm sorry to cut you yeah. off. Yeah. They're letting that shit in. Shit's going down, man. Well, let me just say this. Uh 
I didn't mean to call them shit. I didn't mean to say they're letting that shit in. I I, I did. I meant they're letting this pro this shit problem happen. And immigrants aren't shit. We are. Let me be clear with that too, because it is very important that I say this. They're only coming here because of our foreign policies. They're not just fleeing natural shit. You know, if we legalize drugs, that the cartels would have nothing to fight over. It would take away all their power. That's just one little example, but you got climate situations. You got, they're fleeing tons of situations and it's because of us. We could shut down our military bases alone and shelter a lot of them people. We could. I've heard they're all along that trail actually. I've heard we got tons of bases throughout there all the way on the, all, all the way from South America. To, but. I don't know. That could be that could be bullshit. I don't know that for sure. Yeah. But I, we might. We got like thousand bases. And here at home, you know, the, those wages that owners are complaining about having to pay and being, you know, utilizing the immigration problem or issue to to uh, man the labor force. Uh, just know this: it's it's standard business practice in America. Okay, so you, you, anybody that's in middle, say, considered middle class, upper to lower. Uh, get up, go to work every day. You're only receiving four percent of the profits, right? Of what you're generating. Yeah. Okay. If that upper management's receiving eleven percent, okay, and owners are receiving upwards of eighty-five percent. I know they have. They have. They're taking the risk. I know that they have overhead, but. My point is, it doesn't. That is that is grossly unbalanced. Well, I'll give you one number that will that will put that in perspective. Is the fact that in the 1960s it was 30 to one the CEO would make to the average employee, 30 to one. Then it became 60 to one in the 90s. Oh, wow, what is it now? God. 300 to one on average, and it's sometimes it's up to 400 to one. I believe it. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, come on, dude. It, and of, and, of and I've even heard, I've even heard, like any any common businessman, right, would not want this because you need people to have money to buy your products. So why would you want to concentrate wealth all to yourself and not, you know, like what's the difference between having three hundred billion and two hundred billion? Like, what is the difference? Status. It, it really is, man. It really is because they borrow against their assets. That's not even real money. They just borrow against their assets when they want to buy shit. And uh, and that's all that is. So, dude, it's like Monopoly. It's not even real fucking... It's so fucked up, dude. Yeah. It's so fucked up how we're run. It's, 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 it's just well overdue. It's time to fucking... Check out Zach's pie, by the way. That is, that is pretty sexy right there. Oh, wow. Um... It's long overdue. But that was the surprise for the end. Of, um, because if we smoked this at the beginning, I fucking wouldn't know. <laughs> I don't think we would have got half three. That's why we went to CT at first. I don't know, man. I just think that it's sad to see us at a weakened condition because I know. I Look, I played sports. I've seen people at their greatest. I, uh, I'm into sports, right? We, we can do amazing things with our minds, with our bodies. We are very talented people. Yes, and my military experience and the units I served with and men I served with, I saw just some so amazing shit. I bet. Oh, I can only imagine what you it's saw. Just, it's right up. You know, it's the same. Yeah, same yeah. Same, you know? Some freakish shit. You're like, wow, that motherfucker. I'll never fuck with that motherfucker. But you realize your own potential. Like, yeah, you go beyond far farther beyond than you ever thought you could. They get better. Exactly. So think about that. So like they make you better, right? That that's what I get out of greatness. Great people make me better too. And that's what happens when you have a sick society, you get sicker off each other and sicker of each other. When you have a healthy society where people are building and getting greater, you're building off each other. And I know it sounds crazy, but a lot of these other countries and it even makes them closer when we fuck them up and then they got to rebuild. It builds a bond that's very close. And we're lacking that here. It's the dictatorship of capital. That's what it does to you. It makes everybody chase the bottom line. 
And when that's your priority, well, that's what your moral stance is on things. It's 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 a given. It's a, one is the other. They're not mutually exclusive. So it's crazy, man. But that's that's how I see it, anyway. That's how I see it. It's how more people should see it. It's how the, it's the way to see it. I mean, you'll see it. It, it, it m- most people that tune into here, and I, and even though they're pushing us down, we're still fucking growing. Fuck yeah, oh, whatever, demonetize, <laughs> but we're still growing, and um, and I love that, man. I love that because we're just a stupid little show, and uh, I'm glad you guys believe in us. Facts. I'm glad you at least tune in and uh and and want to listen to what we got to say. It means a lot to me. And yeah, and me, yeah. So, and all the gang, everybody that need me here, that puts it in. I'm proud of everybody here. We uh we do what we can. We show up when we can. Uh, it's heavy what we're dealing with, but we're not the victims here. So we keep it going. We're not the victims. We know exactly where we stand. Yeah, shit fucking sucks, but we're not the victims. We know. We got our mind on the people that are, you know, you got to have a hierarchy, if anything, of the people that are being, that need to be saved first. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how you should be looking at things. Not how, how can I ignore this shit and go about my day and and live my best life? That guy said something so funny um, about how. He said, other populations look in America and they they laugh because these people actually think you can draw something on the drawing board and make it come true. <laughs> and then say, if I think that hard enough, that will come true. He goes, like, over 50% of Americans believe that. And, and we think that is crazy. Well, it's Friday. Yeah, it is. You want to get out of here? We did good. It's about that time. It's an hour and 20. It's about an hour-ish because we, we were messing around at the beginning. So it's about an hour and 10 right now, I'd say. Hour and 10-ish. Yeah. Pull out a little early. I think it's a good message. It is a good message. It's always a good message, hopefully. I, I Look, not even a message, man. It's just what's on our mind. And we just, like like he said earlier, we just want you to start engaging with us. And and see what you come up with and challenge us. Do whatever you want, man. Feel free to challenge me. I am not an asshole anymore. I used to be. <laughs> Seriously, I'm I'm not. I, I would I, like to have like some challengers come on. Dude, actually, like, come on and, and there's not and, a stupid and, thing that I would think I'm dumb. So there's not something stupid that I've asked the dumbest questions. There's nothing that you you can't out dumb my dumbest question. I guarantee it. So I'm always available. You could hit me up anytime. And I will make time if I'm not available immediately, which I probably am available immediately. So, because I am trying to woosah this whole thing and really uh, maintain my shit, man, because this this is heavy. This is a lot. I, I did not think that they were just gonna get away with bombing the last refugee camp. Dude. What, what what is our line? Like that was a good question somebody asked the other day. I forget who it was, but there they, isn't they, one anymore because they, they're so they're so powerful. They can do it right in front of your face and but, say, "What are you going to do about it?" They, there's nothing. I but mean, what about the people that aren't saying anything now? Or what about the people that are pro-Israel? Like what what is your line before you say, "All right, this is a little crazy." All two point two million uh, Gazans got to die. Let's just talk about it right now. Do you, does all 2.2 million or 2.3 well, that's, million that's Gazans got to die? Yeah, that's what Netanyahu means when he says... Well, I'm not talking that, about no, Netanyahu. No, no, I'm just saying that's He's what... He's crazy, means. yeah. That's what he means when he says, we're not stopping until we stop Hamas. Well, to him, Hamas is everybody. Right, right. Did you hear the fucking most recent thing? And we're... That's what I'm saying. That's the message that we're carrying, too. We're taking that and pushing that. Yes. But what he that's just the, said is... Is... Uh, what, what if the rest of the world tried to decide to, said one to one. fuck us up and said, you know, all the citizens got to die too because you guys just knew what was going on and do nothing about it? Yeah. It's like, oh, Dave man. Smith yeah. just said that. He said, he said it was brilliant. He was on Laura something show or whatever. 
And Dave Smith's a libertarian, but he's well spoken, dude, and he's a he's a boss uh, at, at what he does. I, I I like the dude. Anyway, he was saying, what was she saying? She said that, well, their government is Hamas, so they they're all responsible for that. And it sounds terrible. I know there's innocent people, but they they did it to themselves. And um, what was her point? She said uh, that. Oh, they need to figure it out. They need to overthrow wow. Hamas. They need to overthrow Hamas, get them out. And this was her <laughs> point. This was her point, right? And, and, and get back to the status quo. So Dave goes wow. in and goes, but Dave was brilliant because Dave said uh, he he brought up Obama because he knew they were Republicans, right? So he basically said, "Look, we can all agree Iraq and Afghanistan was a, was a shit show, right?" And uh, it was an atrocity. It should have never happened. We can all agree on it. It was a disaster. And they were like, yeah, yeah. And he goes, okay. Well, he goes, Obama. Because he knew they hated Obama. <laughs> he just needed to get the second yes. And he goes, Obama. He goes, Libya. He goes, they had the best living standard in all of Africa. All the African leaders were, were, were liking them. They were going to go secular and, and like just, just allow everybody to be together and start getting the oil and the resources out of the ground and d- develop their own currency and all that stuff. He goes, uh, then we go in there and we kill him and we bomb them to shit and turned it into a slave a slave market. And it was terrible. And it was a bunch of refugees that migrated to Europe and mm-hmm. it caused a bunch of disaster and it was terrible. And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The migrants, uh, all, the refugees all causes terrorist attacks and stuff. And he's, just, he's like, yeah, whatever. He's like, whatever, bitch. So then he's like, he's like, he's like, so then he goes, well, then, what we did cause all the terrorist attacks. And that's right. And yeah. he goes, but then in Syria, he goes, we killed uh, 500,000 people in Syria. We tried to overthrow the government, wasn't successful. We funded uh, ISIS and Al Qaeda, or, or yeah, Al Qaeda at least. I don't know if we funded ISIS there. We created ISIS in yeah. Iraq and then funded them. And the, oh, I know what it was. Oh, no, we did fund them there. Yeah, to fight Iran. And Iran was fighting them. But anyway, so. So anyway, he was like 500,000 died in Syria, 500,000 died in um in Yemen. Uh he goes he goes so so we're talking about millions of people uh that we killed. He goes, "Why are you responsible? Am I responsible? What if they just come bomb us?" He goes, he goes "Are we what if they just kill innocent civilians? Does that mean that they could just kill as many innocent civilians, men, women and he goes, "And if these are our priorities, is this is what we believe, and we're going to sit here and say that we're good citizens, and it's over Islam, uh, Islamists, uh, and we're we're the real citizens over here with, with what we're doing. He goes, he goes. Then I think we shouldn't do that. I think that uh, we shouldn't be cool with killing innocent men, women, and children if that's who we're saying we are as people. Exactly. And it was a beautiful message, and uh, like I said, that dude's a, a boss. Uh, and he and he really knows how to fucking hit home runs because he had them reeled in on the bait the whole time, and he's just like, yeah, yeah, come on, bitch, Obama. What was the response to that? Uh, uh, what can you say? <laughs> what can you say? Zach's pie, baby. What can you say? What can you say to that? You can't say shit. Yeah, that, you know, <coughs> what's that, you know, good old Christian proverb, you know, do unto others? That's right. We would love thy neighbor. <laughs> yeah. Not box them in a cage, take away their rights and take away their food and starve them to death and bomb them and calling it mowing the lo- yard. Uh, that's what they did since 2006. They had Operation Cast Lead, uh, Protective Edge and all those other shits. Like every three years, essentially, they would bomb these people. And they would call it mowing the yard or mowing the lawn. <clears throat> well, he said if they don't want to do business with you, they're just going to bomb you. Yeah. And and now, like I said, they've blown up every hospital, every school, every fucking mosque, every, everything, man. They're destroying these people. There's over 100 journalists that are dead. They they even had drones that were following one to a house. and they Or at least there was a, a, a story about it where they said they killed the whole family. The drones, they were targeting these people by drones and technology, finding out where they would stay at and shit. Following them back to their place and then killing them. It's 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 fucking crazy, dude. It's, it's 
It's fucking <clears throat> stupid, man. It's like, you know, there wouldn't be a need. F- there isn't a need, but there, there wouldn't be a claim for a need for a multi-trillion dollar defense budget if we just would stop our fucking foreign policy practices. Correct. Correct. And that's the big thing, right? I'm so glad you said that because that's something I always tell people. I said, look at the aggression from one side. Look at who starts the wars, who funds the terrorists, who who profits off wars, off endless wars, and creates them and punishes people for speaking out on them and literally centers their whole propaganda, sporting events, every fucking thing around fucking wars. It is the United States of America. And all you have to do is look across the fucking waters and see who else is doing bombing other countries and shit. And if it wasn't, uh, and, and actually Russia well, didn't, are, even, then we go Russia, bomb them. Russia didn't even bomb Ukraine besides missiles and shit. Then, well, we so, so, them from the other side. You know, yeah, whatever but, side's more profitable, was but, the side we're taking. Besides the conflict over there, there's, that shit don't happen. That shit don't happen. Then China ain't doing that shit. Nobody's doing that shit. We're talking about all these fucking people as threats. There's no threat. There's no fucking threat. There's becoming threats because we're the threat pushing all this fucking violence. And then that shit's going to have blowback that's going to come back. And that's the threat. That's the threat. And when that happens, they're going to go say, we told you so. We told you this crazy shit's out there. These people are crazy. And they're going to say they use their racist tropes. And say they're all the same and they don't. And that's the other thing. The Houthis, which is uh, Ur- uh, uh, Ansar Allah and Hezbollah and, and Hamas. and They're not all puppets of Iran. These, the, it, that's the most racist thing. They all say that shit. They're like, motherfuckers, we don't work for whatever. We're our own men and people and shit. And they have their own deals. And there's a real history behind each segment. And we're so eight second attention span oriented that we just assume we go for it and it's wrong because that's another way that they're weakening us they're making us like unintentionally racist like it's like we don't even know we do that we literally think that holy shit if this guy gets in my plane with me and he looks a little suspicious maybe he's maybe i'm a little uncomfortable or something that's because that's been programmed into you and that's, you know, and what we're doing is keep not, in only, mind. not only criminal against humanity, uh, uh, you know, globally outside this country. We're sending our own sons and daughters off to die. That's that's for it. Profits. The ultimate sacrifice, man. And they label it, you know, it's just so how can you fucking say in the same sentence? My son's over there protecting our freedom. Okay. Yeah, you're over boots on the ground in a foreign country. When it's the parents saying it, I I, I kind of just like ah. But when it's the kid saying it, I, I protecting laugh. our freedom. Oh God, come on, man. Come on, man. You know better. Than that. You got to know believe better. Than bullshit, that. man. I'm just saying, be better than that. A lot of soldiers, man, they go right over there and they know they flip right away. They're like, "What the fuck is this? I thought this was a lot different." I thought something different was going to happen here. This is not what I thought it was. Well, I just realized when I was in how expendable you really were. Yeah. That's what that's what you took in. Yeah. And and it's like, you know, when you're there and you're going, why are we here? Right. You know? And that's why you've had that everlasting reaction and it hasn't gone away and, ever and, since and, we've really started studying this shit and they want to and they want to fucking doll it up and polish that fucking turd by sending your your son or your daughter home in a metal box with a with an American flag and a, and a fucking metal right yeah you can go back to 1917 and see how they were locking up Eugene Debs for speaking out against the war when in Russia they were overthrowing the czar because they were all starving. They had this peace, land, and bread thing going on. Mm-hmm. And they 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 were they were dying. They had lost three million in the in the war and and they they fucking had to rise up and they did and they overthrew them. And it was the first workers' revolution ever. And immediately 
Winston Churchill said, we got to go strangle the Bolshevik baby in its bed. Yep. That's who we're dealing with. That defines the, who the aggressor is. Correct. And we were locking up a guy who was saying, we don't need to get in this war, folks. It's workers fighting workers. That's all Eugene's message was. He said, guys, these are the barons. You don't, we don't need this. This isn't us, man. We don't, we don't have anything in this. This is not for us. And that's all he was saying. And he got 10 years hard labor for saying that. That's crazy. That's crazy. And that was way back then. And now you think about how far they come. And then you think about what John Foster Dulles said with the portrayal of external menace. And how you have to arouse the population to a hero yeah. villain ideology. Yeah. And... And boom, to run empire, that's what you got to do. They even give you the blueprint, man. But nobody fucking gives a shit, man. That's all I would teach in school. Man, that's all I would teach in school. Boy, I'd stay right on this shit. Oh, I'd say, we're going to stay right. In. We're going to start at the industrial revolution. We, we'll do some slavery all throughout. But we're going to start at the industrial revolution. And I'm going to show you what the hell happened. Because that's how we did it, off the backs of free slaves. And you know what, man? It's funny because prior to my, whatever you want to call it, my discovery, my learning, my enlightenment, being, you know, I've always been a fan of history, but the Industrial Revolution, I've always, like, just, like, hated that part of history. I've, like, kind of just, like, meh. You know, so it's boring. Just glanced over it. Yeah. Yeah. Boring. But now it's more now it's like interesting so thing ever. It's one of the most interesting aspects same, of it. Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Same thing. And that's, I mean, that that's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence, dude. Because we're learning the real truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. There's all these implications because of the industrial you think, revolution. You think especially we're climate change. And we think that we're past that part. But no, we're still in it's evolved. We're victims of it. We're it's evolved. That's where we're at. It's now. caving in on us, yeah. They we really have no say in the workplace. There is no democracy in the workplace. There's no I mean, they're crushing labor unions. They're, I mean, there's so many more right to work states which have higher higher poverty levels. They have higher everything bad. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, man. Higher unemployment rates. Yeah, like I said, when I was living at the queue, my rent went up eight hundred or like seventeen fifty to uh, twenty five thirty eight or something like that. I was like, one fucking hike. I was like, how is this possible? I didn't want to move either, man. Everybody jumped on that. Uh, I'm glad you know, I did. That, that inflation love train, it, man. man. Yeah. Yeah, man. But I do love it here, though. What are you doing tomorrow? Oh, I got to go to Tampa tomorrow. <gasps> yeah. I was saying you kick about my pool. Oh, uh, it's going to rain tomorrow. Oh, that's what I heard. It's supposed to rain on fucking day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that sucks. What a bummer. I guess I'll just smoke some Zach's pie. Yeah. Zach's pie is the truth. Well, guys, I hope every... Well, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, well, um... Yeah, yeah, we, went, we took back off there for a minute. We hit it, hit it. Hit it yeah, we're officially an hour and a half now. <laughs> it's, it's checkout time. It's closing time. But, um, like I said, thanks, guys. I really do appreciate it. Leave some more comments, though. I know it's a little weird, but even if you're just going to say, like, snicker bumper futs or whatever, it, it matters because the algorithm uh, checks it and, it and it pushes the show more. We're going to try to get our cursing and our profanity under control. Um, I'm going to actually put a little sign here to remind me. To, you know what I mean? Seriously. So That'd be good. That's a good idea. That's smart, right? Yeah. Put the word actually right there. Yeah. All I got to put is a big dollar sign. Like, come on, man. Ah. Like, like, come on. Revolution, baby. Yeah. I, dude, all that money, if, if I get any money, by the way, this this show is nonprofit. We don't take any money. We haven't taken a penny yet. In fact, we pay to do this. Yeah. I pay my editor to put these out. So, so that's how you know when shit goes wrong. You can at least trust us. So we don't take no money. And that's where this is going. That's not. the only thing. I was telling Mike that a long time ago. I said, well, Mike, at the end of the day, 
it's good because if we don't take any money, think about the future of what we're talking about. That makes us righteous. It's going to be the only people that trust that are, are the people that don't take any money. Literally. It's going to be the only people you can trust. Or if you know... That's not a shot at anybody that takes money off t- because a lot of people... Are, you need money. Yes, they operate off their tips and stuff. I have a job. I would love to do this for a living and not have to work. When we go live soon, maybe, we're going to go live and start doing this just straight up. Uh, maybe we'll start taking uh, donations at that point. But just because it's live and it's like that's what they do. So everybody does that. Yes. I don't know. Maybe I won't though. Maybe I won't. You know? I would just like to, like you said, I'd like to hear more comments and like know that there's more like-minded people out there. That yeah. Yeah. The guys, like I said. I want to hear what you got to say. What yeah. We, we, yeah. If, even if it's not snicker bumper futs. How it's affecting you. Yeah. Anything. Thoughts on how, you know, what yeah. you do about it. Like, comment, share. Subscribe if you haven't already. Or a lot of people tell me that they get unsubscribed, so make sure you stay subscribed. That happens. It's a mm-hmm. thing. A lot of people tell me that. I tell you that all the time. But all right, guys, we're out of here.